If you're looking for a simple and efficient service mesh to handle the communication of your applications, then this episode is for you. Welcome to Is It Observable? The main objective of Is It Observable? is to provide tutorials on how to observe a given technology. Today's episode is part of a new series related to the service mesh. And in fact, to also to Kubernetes. In fact, in the Kubernetes series, we already covered several topics such as how to collect metrics out of the cluster, how to ingest logs, how to observe your ingress controllers, and how to observe your cloud costs. And in fact, way more. Today's episode will be focused on one of the most popular service mesh technology, and I'm referring to Linkerd. If you enjoy today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you are going to learn out of this episode. We will start with an introduction to Linkerd and describing the various components of the architecture. Linkerd provides few CRD, so we will look at one of the CRD called the Service Profile. Then we will look at the various features related to observability. We will do a small interview and, like usual, we'll jump into a tutorial. Like explained in the episode explaining what is a service mesh and specifically Istio, a service mesh is built to manage the communication between our services by providing built-in features like retry logic, TLS, ingress and egress, observability, traffic split, security, and multi-cluster communication. With the help of a service mesh, we can focus on building the code of our application without having the need to include code that will manage how our services connect to other services of our cluster, how we should handle the network communication and so, and so on. Once the service mesh is enabled, our service will interact with a local proxy to communicate with other services of the cluster. So the traffic in and out of our application pods will be routed through a cycle proxy. The proxy will in fact reach out to the service that we would like to discuss with so it will make the, the communication to that service. In fact, not to that service, it will communicate to the desired proxy of the desired services, and that proxy will make the communication to our desired services. The service mesh is composed of two components, the control plane that manage the configuration of the service mesh and the various features that we want to enable or not within our application and a data plane that manage the communication between the service through the proxy container. At the end, the control plane injects the sidecar container in our workload to enable the data plane. As expected, Linkerd will have all the features expected from a service mesh. But what makes Linkerd different from solutions like Istio? First, it's the usage of a specific proxy. Linkerd doesn't rely on Envoy. It's rely on Linkerd proxy. It's written in REST. And it's supposed to be lightweight and more performant. Linkerd does not provide any ingress, but has been designed to work with existing Kubernetes ingress solutions such as NGINX, Traffic, uh, or Kong. Linkerd is very easy to use, but it's also supports, of course, all the features that we expect from a service mesh. So it supports the retry logic, the specifications, the TLS certificates and how to route it, observability solution, traffic splits through the SMI extension. But what is an SMI? SMI is a standardized implementation of Kubernetes service mesh. SMI stands for Service Mesh Interface that provides few standard CRD that help us to standardize the implementation of few C uh, service mesh features. So here is the link uh, to a web the SMI website explaining everything in details. 
So let's have a look at Linkerd's architecture. Linkerd control plane is combined of several components. We have the destination, so it's a service that will be used by the data plane. The destination service provides all the destination rules, which requests are allowed, the route, the retry logic, the timeouts, and more. And at the end, the destination will be the core component that will manage the communication of our services, of course, through the proxy. The identity service, it acts as the TLS authority. The identity service will provide signed certificates to the various proxies and guarantee a secure communication between the proxies. The proxy injector, well, in the name, you can understand it will inject the proxies. So the proxy injector register to the Kubernetes admission controller. It means that every time a pod is created, the admission control will reach out to the proxy injector to inspect the definition and specifically to the annotations. Linkerd requires specific annotations. So if the Linkerd annotation exists, the injector modify the workload by adding first the proxy in it and then the Linkerd proxy to the pod. Linkerd data plane. So the data plane of Linkerd relies on the Linkerd proxy that will manage the communications, provide also Prometheus metrics automatically and manage a TLS. The init container, the this container will run before any other containers of the pod. It's there to force the traffic to be routed to the Linkerd proxy. Similar to Istio, Linkerd provides a CLI named Linkerd. This CLI will allow us to interact with the control plane of Linkerd. But the CLI will also help us to install the control plane, inject Linkerd proxy, check the installation, and more, of course. Linkerd CLI is not the only way of deploying. You can also deploy Linkerd using a Helm chart. So here is the link to the Linkerd Helm chart if you need to deploy it through Helm charts. Similar to Istio, Linkerd provides new CRDs in our Kubernetes cluster. So we have the server CRD, the server authorization, and last, the service profile. The server and the server authorization will be required in case you want to authorize specific traffic to specific services. In that case, you will need to define the server object that will map to your services and the server authorization that will specify which clients are allowed to connect to a given service. The service profile is a CRD provided by Linkerd. The service profile will help us to define lists of routes for our services. So what is a route? So let's take an example. So we have the hipster shop. Every time we reach out to the hipster shop to look at the product, we send the HTTP GET and you can see that we have the slash products and then we have an ID. So if we do another product, it's the same URL, but the ID has changed. So at the end, this could be transformed into a route. It means that we can apply a regular expression. So here, HTTP GET, and instead of the product ID, we replace it by backslash W plus, which means any type of character, alpha or numerical character. And that will correspond to the ID of a product. In the hipster shop, we also have other requests like the set currency. The set currency is a post request with a payload. Whatever the payload we send, at the end, it's always a set currency request. So at the end, we can also uh, create a route specific to that one. The other uh, request that could be also interesting for the hipster shop is the slash cart. So we can either do a HTTP get cart uh, without any parameters. So that's going to be to view the cart. And the other one is to uh, add a product in the, in, the, in, in the cart. So here is the post request. And this also could be uh, added as a route. We can build, in that case, a service profile with four rules. So one with the product page, 
one with the currency change, one for viewing the cart, and last for updating the cart. By creating those routes, Linkerd will provide on top of the service profile specific metrics related to those routes. So here is an example. Also, one with a service profile, we have the ability to define retry logics and timeout logic. So in our example of the hip to shop, so here is the service profile that we could define. So we can see that we define a name. The name will corresponds to the service names uh, out of this namespace. Uh, we apply the, the, the different routes. And for each route, we define a condition, a path regex, and a name. Service profile will expose extra metrics with the extension with that will be presented later. With the help of the service profile, we will be able to define for a given route the retry logic. So here is an example. So here for a given route, we just enable the retry logic. Of course, we will need also to define the retry budget. So here is uh, an example of a trying budget uh, to uh, define how much retry we, we, we will do for a given route. And also we can define the timeout. So here is an example of a timeout. You can see that we add to a specific route uh, the timeout and we define a value for this one. Like explained previously, each route defined will provide extra metrics to the Prometheus exporter. So it makes sense to, if you want to look at specific metrics that correspond to specific transactions to build your routes as well. Linkerd provides two types of observability support. So we have the Prometheus metrics and the distributed traces. So let's start with the Prometheus metrics. Like explained, all the Linkerd proxy will automatically expose metrics on the port 4191 of each proxies. So you can simply create at the end a service monitor to let Prometheus grab those metrics. What type of metrics do we get? So similar to the Envoy proxy, the Linkerd proxy will produce protocol level metrics. So we'll see the number of requests coming in, uh, the number of response received, uh, the latency for a given uh, request, and so on. In fact, not latency, it's going to be the time to first byte. And if you define routes, you will have specific metrics to those routes. So the uh, route request total, so the number of requests coming in, the number of response received, and of course, the latency or the time to first byte for a given route. All of those metrics will have specific labels. So we have the destination, uh, the route name, and of course, more. We can also have on top of that, uh, specific metrics showing you the communication between the proxy and the control plane. So we have the control request tool, so number of requests sent to the control plane, the number of response uh, received by the control plane, and last, the latency so the, of, uh, to communicate with the, the control plane. We also have transport metrics, so uh, all the metrics related to TCP, so the TCP open, close, a number of, uh, of open connections, number of write bytes, the read bytes, uh, the duration to, uh, of a connection, and so on. We have specific metrics to the identity metrics, so that will report any metrics related to certificates. So for example, if we want to keep track uh, the expiration of a given certificate, we can do that with the identity cert expiration. And we also, also can look at the number of time that certificate has been refreshed as well. Otherwise, Linkerd provide also other metrics with the WIS extensions. So the WIS extensions will, if you deploy it by default, you will, it will come with its own Prometheus instance a Grafana with a couple of Grafana dashboards, and a web interface to drill down in the various Linkerd metrics. If you don't want to use the Prometheus instance provided by Linkerd, there is a process to deploy with extensions without Prometheus. You will precise to the hand chart that you don't need Grafana and Prometheus, and you will need to map your Prometheus server with the WIS extensions. In Prometheus, you also need to do some settings. So you will need to configure Prometheus by adding new scrapping rules configurations. Otherwise, you can also uh, keep the Prometheus instance of Linkerd and uh, use your own Prometheus servers to store the data. And for this, 
you can use one of the features provided by Prometheus. So here's a link to that feature. It's called Federate. Federate, basically it's a Prometheus server that will reach out to another Prometheus uh, server to collect the data. So it's a way of having small Prometheus exposing data and a big one to basically uh, ingest all the metrics from the various uh, Prometheus servers. Proxies and control planes automatically have exporter. Therefore, you can easily ingest those metrics in Prometheus using scrapping rules configuration or service monitor, but with all the solution, example like Danetra. So let's have a look at the distributed traces. Linkerd provides a support for distributed traces. This support is mainly compatible with open census. Just to remind, open census is the ancestor of open telemetry. Open Census was producing traces, or is still producing traces, in fact, using a specific tracing propagator, the B3 propagator. So here's a link to the B3 propagator. So it means that if you want to enable the tracing feature on Linkerd, you will need to check that first, your instrumentation library is also using B3 propagator, propagators. And also the other point, uh, if you're, you're, you will probably use a backend to ingest and store your traces. So you need to check that your observability backend supports as well B3 tracing context. To enable the tracing feature, you will need to install another extension. It's called the Jaeger extension. These extensions by default will deploy the Jaeger backend, the Jaeger injector, and an open telemetry collector. But this deployment is managed by Helm. Therefore, you could clearly remove Jaeger backend and the collector if you already have one. You, at the end, you will generate traces with open telemetry and you will need to create a collector pipeline that will receive your own open telemetry traces and the open census spans produced by Linkerd. You will map all those spans together, of course, for that, you will need the B3 tracing context on your app and from Linkerd. The Jaeger injector component is a core component in the story because it will inject the right environment variables to every Linkerd proxy. So to let the link, those Linkerd proxy produce spans, it needs to have, first, first of all, the tracing features enable and the route or the path to your collector endpoint. By enabling the tracing on Linkerd, you will get the latency of each communication coming, going through a Linkerd proxy. So here is an example of a trace produced with Linkerd. In order to get more details related to Linkerd and also news related to the product, Let's call Jason Morgan, Technical Evangelist at Bayon. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? Very good, thanks. In fact, I'm doing an episode related to Linkerd. So I briefly presented the concept, the architecture, a couple of features, and especially the one related to observability support. I'm calling you because we would like to learn more about Linkerd and get product updates. Before we jump to the questions, could you introduce yourself to the community? So I'm uh, I'm Jason Morgan. I am a technical evangelist at Buoyant. Uh, it's a title that I didn't see a lot when I started, but now I see a fair bit. Uh, it's uh, I'm effectively a, a developer advocate, but at Linkerd, we focus on talking to platform engineers, and so I thought that was kind of a better a better title for it. Um, you know, I come to I come to Buoyant by way of VMware. So I was previously over at at VMware when they did the whole Tanzu application platform and the things they were building there. And then prior to that, uh, a company called Pivotal that were big in a cloud foundry. I've been in the container space actively, geez, um, somewhere around seven eight years. Uh, and really like it. Usually when a, a solution, a platform has been built, there is always a story behind. Do you have any explanation on this? So Linkerd, Linkerd got created. So funny story, right? Like Linkerd is actually the first service mesh product and the folks at Buoyant coined the term service mesh. So when you're getting annoyed about the marketing around the term service mesh, right? You can actually point a finger at, uh, at my boss and say that guy. Um, it's his fault that we're dealing with this term. 
Um, but but basically, like service meshes come about in response to a problem that you run into once you've been using microservices a little bit in anger. So I used to work at a satellite imagery company, right? And they had launched this new imagery satellite. Very cool company. They launched an, an, uh, an imagery satellite that was entirely controlled by microservices, right? They had a platform, you know, it was, I think it was five different languages. So there were, there were over 300, there were somewhere around 300 to 350 microservices written in over five different languages, all running on Cloud Foundry, right? And, you know, what we found was uh, every single language, every single language in, in our organization had a community of practice. Now, community of practice took responsibility for things like, you know, what should, what are practices acceptable in this language? And then what are our shared libraries how will we how will we handle them and keep them keep them up to date? And then as the as part of the platform team, I had to negotiate with the communities of practice about what standards they'd set in their apps, what versions of things they'd support in their shared libraries. And there was a there was a nice well, I say nice, there was a really terrible and painful mix of, you know, operational concerns being on the developers and operational concerns being on the platform team. So I'd have a responsibility to update the service discovery mechanism, right? But the I'd have to go to five communities of practice and get them to upgrade their shared library. And then those community practices would have to set a standard that other teams would then adopt eventually, all of them doing this operational work instead of the application work that they're that they're being required to do, right? So it, it became really painful. Same thing, right? Like if you've dealt with, you know, 30 plus development teams and you ask them all, hey, listen, I need every app to have a slash metrics endpoint and a slash health endpoint. I need to actually share data in a semi-consistent way, right? Like that's that's a brutal task. Um, and then forget about it if you want to tell them, hey, can you, you know, can we build a system to roll TLS certificates so that we can have encryption between our components? So the, the point being, when you start doing microservices, especially as you scale, right? You can either, you, you're gonna need some code uh, or some operational concerns are gonna need to be handled by the individual application instances. And it's either gonna, either gonna be handled by code that lives inside the app in the form of this, this shared library, or it's gonna be handled by some other process, right? Kubernetes, one of its big innovations is that we can stick two containers side by side in an effective network namespace in this little isolated pod. And then I can I can force the traffic from my application container to go through a second container. And it can be, you know, I call it like my ombudsman for the network, right? Like, or your application's ombudsman. It'll hold your app's hand, your traffic's hand, and do all the stuff that it needs to do so it behaves well in the network. And that that second process is a, is a little proxy, right? and the network of proxies talking to each other, that becomes your service mesh. So service mesh exists to take code out of your app, put it into this, into this separate process and do a bunch of useful stuff, right? Give people common metrics, right? Like I, I imagine when you were playing with Linkerd, one of the things that you found really nice is you got some instru instrumentation on every app that you put in the mesh right at the gate, right? And that was, that's kind of the key innovation there is this thing can now do stuff in a in a common fashion for every single application, right? And you never have to talk to your development teams about changing the way that proxy works, right? You can just do that. You can do that on your own as a platform team. So no more going around and begging app developers to stop writing application code and start writing operational code. Let's talk about product updates. Could you share any news related to the future releases or future support? Anything that could increase the positioning of Linkerd in the service mesh landscape? Yeah, so um, to start with, Linkerd has been, like Linkerd started focused on, hey, can we be fast and can we be easy to use? Fast, secure, and easy to use, right? Like, and we've got a security story that we think is, is really good, but, um, what we released in 2.12 is we've started implementing the Gateway API. So if you're familiar, so if you're listening, uh, you may or may not be familiar with the Gateway API specification. 
But what this is, is essentially there is work in Kubernetes to add, you know, more intelligent behavior around how do you get traffic into the cluster and how do you manage traffic between applications? And the, the way they're looking to add that into Kubernetes is through this gateway API specification. Uh, Linkerd has gone through a tremendous change since 2.11 to essentially adopt the gateway API into core Linkerd. So to, so to step back a little bit, right? Like one of the things that I talk about a lot, I, 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 I say this often, I, I say it, it's like a thing about Linkerd that's really good, is we require to use very few custom resources to work with Linkerd. You know, that, that drive and that goal to be really simple is butting up against, you know, the needs of folks for things like zero trust, uh, zero trust uh, authorization or zero trust uh, architecture in their apps, right? Where we can we can ensure that all things are authorized, all things are encrypted inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Um, so with 2.12, we're using the gateway API resources to build out fine-grained policy. What I mean by fine-grained policy is the ability to say, based on this cryptographic identity, we will allow you to access these ports and within these ports, these verbs and these paths within an API. Today, we are looking at HTTP routes and other constructs that the gateway API has created that allow us to attach policy to things that are not yet, but that will soon be core Kubernetes APIs, right? Those are these, those are these gateway API APIs, gateway, Jesus, gateway API objects. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, so that's where we're at. So today Linkerd 2.12 is not fully implementing the gateway API. What we've done is we're essentially cloning the gateway API resources, pulling them in as, as custom Linkerd custom resource definitions. I should have found a better word. Linkerd custom resource definitions that are essentially a, a little fork of the gateway API custom resource definitions. And we're using those to do fine grained policy and really overhaul the way Linkerd does authorization policy as a whole. Uh, we expect in the next release to fully move to the gateway API so that there is no need for anything custom from Linkerd at all in order to do, do what the gateway API says. So we're, we're enjoying that, you know, we're on that journey, you know, today uh, we're still in a place where we mix things from the gateway API and the uh, service mesh interface, the SMI interface. And we hope that by 2.13, we'll be all the way on the gateway API spec and that anyone who wants to use any, a service mesh interface thing will be, uh, will be doing that, you know, on their own. You mentioned something very interesting. The traffic split on 2.11 was relying on the SMI extension. So it means that the traffic split will rely on the new CRDs introduced by the API gateway of Kubernetes. How would we manage traffic split in the future? Yeah, so great question. And it's actually gonna be the subject of a talk I'm doing at KubeCon here in October. Um, so the, right now, um, there's been this ongoing work for SMI, right? Service mesh interface. It's a way that folks tried to make, tried to make some service mesh constructs interoperable between service meshes. And, you know, y'all can judge for yourselves how well it worked out. We don't see a lot of adoption on it. We, right now we see two products that use SMI to do stuff. Uh, we see Flagger from the folks over at Weave or from that Flux toolkit. And we see Argo rollouts from the Argo folks. Um, so we're working like the talk that I'll be giving at KubeCon is with one of the folks from one of the Flux maintainers, or sorry, one of the Flagger maintainers on using the gateway API to control Linkerd's traffic splitting behavior, right? Which isn't supported in core 212, but we expect to be supported in either a point release or in 213. So, and then the, the Argo thing, we just have to wait for Argo rollouts to move support to the gateway API, which we expect, we expect to see. And then at that point, we won't see any implementations that require the service mesh interface. So SMI will be deprecated in the future releases of Kubernetes. So we're not, we're not officially deprecating SMI. 
just to be clear, right? We have SMI moved into its own extension. And what we plan to do is as SMI objects need updating, right? We'll update the extension and basically decouple SMI from core Linkerd so that there will be no, no lag on Linkerd development on account of SMI's work. And from the other side, SMI won't have to worry about Linkerd. Like as they make changes, all we need to do is update the SMI extension, which will translate SMI objects into gateway API or Linkerd objects. Do you have any updates related to observability? I really like the data exposed from Link the Linkerd proxy and the extra metrics provided by the Wiz extensions to see more observability related to the control plane. I thought that it was very interesting. Are you planning to increase the level of metrics or start using standards like open telemetry to produce Prometheus and open telemetry metrics? What is the plan on observability? Right, so I, I know that we are we are considering doing our first significant change to the Linkerd Viz extension in a long time, right, in the 2.13, 2.14 timeframe. So Linkerd Viz is actually fairly old and has, has been the same for a while. Uh, and we're considering making some making some changes there as to what the dashboard shows and how it looks to make it a little bit a little bit more modern. Um, you know, from an open telemetry perspective, right? Like there's been, I know on the Linkerd side, there's been a lot of caution as far as what we'll do as we were waiting for standards to kind of coalesce around, around open telemetry. But now that it's there, Right, like I expect, I expect to see Linkerd between, you know, 2.13 and 2.14 to look seriously at, you know, can we change, can we change a little bit of our story around tracing? Can we change a little bit of our story around, around data collection to make it, uh, make it clearer? The biggest thing I'd, I'd ask is if you or anybody listening, right, if you have, if you have interest in a feature around open telemetry or a change in the way that Linkerd does metrics, if you can raise a GitHub issue or vote on existing GitHub issues in the Linkerd environment, that goes a huge way to help us set our direction, right? Like Link Linkerd is good because we implement features when we have a clear understanding of actual customer use cases or actual adopter use cases. So if you can go and say like, hey, listen, I would like, I would like you to support this type of trace propagation because of X, Y, or Z, right? That's um, that's very compelling for our folks and helps shape our our development efforts. So, if you want to have a support on Open Telemetry Trace Propagator, please raise your thumb up on the GitHub issue. Here is the link. Linkerd is fully open source. Is there a commercial version or a managed version available for customers? looking for long-time support or even to get some expertise. Does Bion provide any of those services? So to be clear, there is no secret enterprise Linkerd distribution. There's only open source Linkerd. And boy at the company, like we don't do that. We don't do anything around, you know, proprietary Linkerd features for those that pay. What we do do is we have built a management platform, right? So we have tooling that you can you can access for money, which will convert your Linkerd environment into a managed service, right? So your control plane still runs in your cluster, but you will add a buoyant agent and a buoyant Linkerd operator. So the buoyant agent will collect data, will check that your environment is healthy, will alert you and will alert buoyant if there's something wrong with your Linkerd install. It will also do things like aid you with policy, uh, store and collect metrics for you so that you have metrics pulled offsite if you don't want to use the Linkerd Biz extension. It will give you details around your multi-cluster install, a bunch of a bunch of stuff that makes doing complex Linkerd operations a lot simpler. And we ship an operator in your cluster that will handle installs and upgrades of your Linkerd environment. Right? That means like today we're gonna do a webinar on upgrading from 211 to 212, and it's not a trivial experience. Right, and I had to relearn how to do an upgrade from 211 to 212 because I'd just been using Buoyant Cloud to do it. And I, you know, the way I was upgrading from 211 to 212, you know, yesterday was I was updating a CRD 
changed the version and my Linkerd environment just got rolled forward to the next version. Um, when you don't have that, like it's, it's more work. So, you know, we'll do, we'll take on some of the operations and management burden of Linkerd for you for money, but there's no private Linkerd features, right? We can just make the already the easiest service mesh even easier. So we covered all the questions that I had. Thanks for your time. I would be at KubeCon North America, so I hope I would be able to listen to your presentation. I also invite all of you to join KubeCon, and if you have the chance, listen to Jason's presentation. See you in a few weeks in Detroit, and have a great rest of the day. See you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you as well. In this tutorial, we are going to look at the observability features provided by Linkerd. We will produce metrics from Linkerd, and we'll see how to ingest those metrics in Prometheus, but also in Dynatrace. So for this, of course, you will need a Kubernetes cluster, but also a Dynatrace tenant. So if you don't, you can still start an elevation. We will use the Nginx ingress controller to expose our demo application, the Hipster Shop. And this time, we're going to use a, a version of the Hipster Shop fully instrumented using open telemetry. We'll have a few small K6 low test to generate traffic and see the, the features provided by Linkerd. We will deploy the Prometheus operator and the open telemetry operator. In this tutorial, we will look at different things. We will, of course, see how to deploy Linkerd, configure the ingress controller rules to make it work with Linkerd. We will see how to add annotations to your workload or namespace to inject the Linkerd proxy. We will also touch base on the service profile. So we'll create a manual service profile, but we'll also show how to use an auto creation feature provided by Linkerd. We will deploy the Wiz extensions, but we will slightly modify it to utilize our own Prometheus server. We'll configure for that Prometheus to scrap the new data. We will also configure our workload to let Dynatrace scrap those new metrics. And also, just for fun, we will uh, create an open telemetry collector pipeline to ingest the Prometheus metrics, modify them, and send it over to Dynatrace. So like every tutorial uh, of uh, Easy Observable, you always have a GitHub repository. So like usual, you need a Kubernetes cluster. So no surprise, you can pick whatever flavor you want. You need to deploy the ingress controller because we will expose the app through the ingress controller and configure it with Linkerd. And you will need an address tenant. So to be able to deploy, if you don't have any Dynatrace tenants, don't, not a big deal. Uh, you can basically go to dynatrace.com slash trial and uh, you can start a free trial. Once you get uh, the environment, uh, you will have a specific URL. So make sure to copy the first piece uh, until before the slash. Uh, so that will be your uh, Dynatrace uh, tenant URL. Uh, you will need it uh, for the rest of the uh, tutorial. Uh, for this, we will deploy the Dynatrace operator in the cluster. So I have in the tutorial, I have explained the steps through a script approach. If you don't want to follow that approach, you can still go to uh, Deploy Dana Trace on the left menu, then Start Installation, and we will pick the Kubernetes cluster. And from there, uh, we will have to create the right token. So name, uh, create a token for the operator, so it will create it automatically, create a token for the data ingest, and then you can say skip uh, SSL certificate, and it will give you the options to download a, a the Dana Cube, which is uh, one of the CRDs that comes with the, the uh, Dana Trace operator. And once you have uh, 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 filled that Dana Cube, you can basically apply uh, those commands. So that's from a UI perspective, but uh, I have uh, suggested the script approach in this uh, tutorial. So you'll see uh, you have a couple of ma uh, manifests to apply and, and so on. Uh, but uh, this required to create uh, two different tokens. Uh, so I already create them. Uh, so I'm just going to show you the, the the values, the scope that is required for the token. So for the operator token, you need the create active get tokens, the read entities, ingest metrics, read settings of write settings, and then you're going to have access programs, event feed, metric, and topology. We will read configurations, write configurations, pass uh, all the pass uh, scopes. 
So that's for that's for the operator, and uh, there is a second token for the operator that is there for ingesting um, event signals. In fact, in, in mainly uh, metrics. But in our demo, we're going to ingest also, also open telemetry traces. So that's why make sure to include at least the open telemetry traces. Uh, and the other required uh, scope will be ingest metrics. Once you have those tokens, save the values. Those values will be very important. You will need it later for the deployment. Once the data trace tenant is deployed, we can deploy Prometheus without Grafana. No need of having Grafana there. We will configure uh, Prometheus uh, because we're using an integration from K6 that use uh, one of the feature called Remote Writer. So we have to enable it. So there is a CRD called Prometheus. So we have we need to get it, edit, and add this line, those lines in this uh, object uh, Prometheus to enable that feature. Then uh, we need the Prometheus service name because we. The K6 integration uh, requires to have it to push uh, the metrics coming from K6. Uh, so make sure to grab it and update the manifest file that has, in fact, the workload for K6. The operator, we need it uh, because we're going to use the uh, the, the, or the uh, open temperature operator to deploy collectors. Uh, we have two collectors, in fact. One is the sidecar and the other one is a daemon set. Uh, so also here you see we'll... we'll configure uh, those uh, uh, collectors by uh, replacing the Dynatrace URL, the token, uh, the cluster name, and, and so on and so forth. So what do you get out uh, of this from your cluster? Couple of things. So let's start with Dynatrace. So you will have a couple of things. You will have an active gate running. All the one agent pods uh, that comes with this Dynacube. Uh, same thing for the CSI driver. This is because we use a specific uh, operator mode called the cloud native injection, uh, full stack. Uh, and then we will have the operator uh, pods, uh, the webhook pod as well, because it's registered to the uh, Kubernetes admission controller. Second thing that we need to have is on the default namespace, so you can see here, we see all the stack of the Prometheus operator, except Grafana. And here we have our collector, the daemon set collector. The sidecar connector collector will be running in uh, the Hypto shop, and we don't have um, deployed yet. Second thing is the, uh, in terms of uh, uh, things that you should expect, you should expect that uh, in the ingress nginx that you, are, you have your control nginx ingress controller running, and last is in the uh, open telemetry operator system. So it's uh, the one that managed the operator. You need to have uh, the, that pod and that will allow you to inject uh, the various collectors. So to deploy Linkerd, very simple. Uh, first, in the uh, uh, Linkerd.io, uh, you have all the docs documentations that uh, uh, help you to deploy it. So you can take the Linkerd.2.12, uh, as you can see, there's a getting started guide here where it's explained how to set up. And this is gonna basically follow the instructions that we're gonna use to deploy Linkerd uh, with the CLI. Uh, but don't worry if you don't, I mean, CLI provides a lot of uh, interesting features, but if you want to deploy it in a different way, there is an instructions to deploy it with Helm. So installing Linkerd with Helm in here uh, you have all the diverse steps described as well. But in our case, we're going to use the CRD. So first command, I make sure to deploy the command line. In my case, I already have uh, deployed the command line. So if you do linkerd, I can see that I am on the 2.12 version. And then there is a couple of things you can do. Linkerd is... Uh, is going to check that all uh, the cluster that uh, we have there uh, allow us to install it. So here, everything is there. So first, we need to apply the CRDs because it comes with the service profile, the server, the ser service authority, and then a couple of others. Uh, and then once we have this, we can basically do the install of Linkerd. So once you have deployed it, it means that uh, you will have uh, the uh, this so the control plane so the identity destination 
service, the identity uh, service, and last, uh, the proxy injector. So those are the three uh, uh, services described that you will have in the control plane. And this is what you can see. Uh, to be able to inject Linkerd proxy within our workload, we will need to annotate our namespaces. And for this, we're going to annotate uh, the hip to shop namespace. We have to uh, create the namespace. Uh, once the namespace has been created, we will annotate. So by adding the annotation Linkerd inject enabled in the namespace uh, with this, uh, that will allow me to avoid uh, adding this annotation on all the workload of this skipping uh, deployment. So let's apply this one in this uh, Kubernetes namespace. Uh, we will put the sidecar container, so we apply it. And uh, so nothing has been created because now uh, in the, the, word, the deployment files, I'm going to show you briefly, I have also added um, for a couple of uh, new annotations, uh, annotation for Dynatrace to scrap the metrics coming from the proxy that will be injected by Linkerd. And also, um, I have also uh, precised in this workload that I want to inject the sidecar uh, collector in those uh, in this, those spots. So let's deploy this one. We expect to uh, have at least three containers on most of the workload of the Hipster Shop. Uh, so one for the official pod of the Hipster Shop, uh, one for the Linkerd proxy, and one for the Open Telemetry Sidecar proxy. So let's have a look at the the pods running there. As you can see, we it's almost it's uh, almost started. Uh, here we need, almost have three uh, pods, but most of the pods here at the moment has uh, almost three pods running. So we have uh, the desired number as expected. So if we go back to the answers, what do you expect? In two few minutes. So if you look here, I have I mean I have several environments, but I, the one I'm referring is the one that is open telemetry. You can see that we have the cart services here, uh, the checkout services. So if I click on this one, uh, I, I can see a uh, few details related to that specific workload, the cart service uh, that uh, is producing also uh, open telemetry uh, tra uh, trace spans and traces. So it means that I could also go to distribute traces in the trace and see uh, uh, the various traces. One thing I did not uh, exp uh, mention, uh, let me go back to the workload uh, and search for the, uh, the ingress. So to make it work with uh, NGNX, uh, so every uh, ingress uh, has their, they have specific uh, annotations to be uh, set to make it compatible with Linkerd. Uh, in this case here, I'm saying that uh, there's an annotation for uh, describing the documentation of Linkerd. So check the documentation for this uh, to add the right annotation to make it compatible uh, with Linkerd. We need to add those two repo, the, the uh, Linkerd and Linkerd Edge, and from there we will be able to deploy. I'm not going to deploy the standard ones because I'm going to basically uh, create a namespace but in our particular case, uh, when I will deploy uh, the Helm command, I'm going to disable a Prometheus. And this is where I am also defining the Prometheus URL to co interact with uh, my own Prometheus server. So let's go, uh, let's go ahead and apply this. So uh, I already have those two Helm repo uh, applied. So I just need to do this with create. So let me do this. So Linkerd Wiz has been deployed and uh, usually it creates, as expected, a namespace, a Linkerd Wiz. So let's have, let's have a look at what we have there. So we have the metric API, the tap, the tap injector and the web. So it's a dashboard. Uh, and if we look at the metric API, if you just uh, we can see that it's currently referring to our own Prometheus instance. So it's matching, it's working with uh, with what we need. Uh, with the Wiz extension, 
uh, we can now get uh, data from uh, Kubernetes from our Prometheus. Uh, for this, uh, once you have deployed it, uh, you, we need to add scrapping rules. So to add scrapping rules, uh, to just to let you know, I have added um, in the Prometheus folder of this repo um, all the scrapping rules required to make it match with Linkerd. So what we're going to do is going going to uh, use from uh, Prometheus Operators and extensions where you can add additional scrapping files. To do that, we need to create a secret with the right annotation. So let me copy uh, this part here to add uh, the additional scrapping file into a secret. Once it's been created, the, then I only need to edit. So I'm going to do uh, the Prometheus configuration and I will edit this one. Okay. Uh, so now let's have a look. So now I have enabled our features that remote writer and add a line just before or after whatever. And these settings will be applied with our Prometheus instance. Uh, one thing is if we look at so here we have all our pods. If we take, for example, the front end. So if we do a port forward on the port 4191, which is the uh, local port for Linkerd proxies metrics. So here it's the proxy level, but we also have it on the control plane level as well. To get extra metrics, we're going to create few service profile uh, within our this update demo. Um, the first one is a manual way. So the manual way is uh, similar to what we explained. So it's exactly what we explained. I just added the also the the main uh, path of the hipster shop, uh, and then I have the slash cards, uh, the slash product, the set currency, and so on. So those are there and are ready to be used. I have just set one timeout uh, policy uh, for the uh, route, this route, so we can apply this one. So that's the manual way. So defining this by knowing what you need. So let's apply this one on the hip the shop. Okay, now it's been created. So there is another way of, of uh, creating service profile. And for this, you obviously you need traffic. Uh, so just remind, uh, if we look at the pods running in the hip the shop, we have the K6 load generator running. And if we, uh, this K6 generator is using a X distributed tracing plugin, which means if I go to Dan Trace that is configured to receive uh, the distributed traces, I am going to see uh, the various traces generated. So to do that, you to see the distributed traces, you need to go to distributed traces on the left menu, and you will have the injected traces and here i can look at for example the front end is generating some trace and we will see that uh, we have the k6 uh, doing a get request and then we have all the spans coming in on the various layer of the architecture so it works fine so we have traffic going in which means now if i want i can create routes using uh, the uh, Wiz extensions uh, to be able to uh, uh, create a route based on observed traffic. So here I have three uh, command lines that has been uh, applied uh, to be able to apply it because we have recently deployed the Wiz extensions. Make sure to restart your pods doing a rollout or deleting whatever you want. Uh, to make sure that uh, an extra part of the we the of uh, linkerd is ex is injected it's the tap uh, injector so here i'm going to apply it so here the idea is that based on the current traffic running uh, here in the card service it will basically let 20 seconds uh, of observation observation uh, to create the right service profile so here uh, after 20 seconds this will be applied so now we have the card services service profile created and now let's do the another service for the catalog so we did it from the product we're going to do it from the currency and last from the checkout 
So if you look at the, the metrics uh, that expose, we should have this notion of routes. So if we can say, if we find search for routes, now we have a couple of routes. So you can see here, we have the uh, route response. So we can see that we have the, the different post of the Hiptoshop. So the idea is to now send those metrics to Dynatrace. So we have the proxy metrics, and then we have the metrics provided through uh, the Wiz extensions. So I'm going to adjust those data in a, there are two different ways. The first way is, uh, in fact, uh, done automatically through uh, the uh, annotations. So by putting those annotations, I am basically for uh, asking the Anatrace operator to collect uh, the metrics exposed from the Prometheus uh, exporter on the port of the, uh, the, the on the proxy. So normally, uh, if we pick one of the metrics that is exposed, so a route request or something like this, I should see it in Dynatrace. So that's for the, the proxy metrics. So all the deployment that has a, a, a sidecar proxy, I've added this one. I could have it done a, a different way by putting a service, but here that works perfectly well. From the other one, uh, from the metrics provided by uh, the tab or the Wiz extension, uh, I have this um, open telemetry uh, daemon set collector that has been deployed uh, and uh, it's received the traces, it's received, and then I added the Prometheus receivers as well. And I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, I just copy paste the scrap config rules that is provided by Linkerd in these Prometheus receivers. So basically, it's, everything is matched to uh, yeah what we have applied for configuring Prometheus, uh, and those metrics are collected and then pushed back to Dynatrace. In the case of Dynatrace, I'm using I'm adding a few of the plugins for the community attributes and so on. In the case of Dynatrace, uh, I'm using an extensions, and all the metrics will be mapped with Linkerd in front of it. So if we go back to Danatrace, let's have a look at the metrics that we have. So to do this first, let's look at on the left side, there is a different way of looking at the metrics that uh, you may have received. Uh, you have metrics. Metrics is like a sort of inventory of the data metrics. And then you have the data explorer where we're going to use it to build uh, dashboards. So in the metrics, two uh, metrics that's coming in. So we have uh, everything that starts with linker D, just search for that. We can see that we have uh, the controller request total, the memory consumed, the inbound HTTP authorizations. So we have uh, also metrics about the um, prom QL request uh, uh, from, from the exporters. So we have plenty of metrics that is ingested. Then remember, we have a couple of metrics like I think it was route underscore something. And you can see now that those also are uh, collected through uh, the proxy. So we have two, two different uh, uh, metrics. So the Linkerd um, pref prefix is the one coming from the open telemetry collector. And the other ones is uh, naturally the one that comes from Prometheus. So we're going to create charts. So uh, then once we have the metrics, the idea is that uh, the good news is we have all the diverse dimensions. So we can look at direction, destinations, and we can also put the route name. So look, have a look at the route name. So here we can see we have the get cart, the product catalog. So we have the various routed that we've created. And now we have the uh, request total. So here we can say that we want uh, the value. And we can see how many requests uh, come, is coming in, in this, uh, for this particular route. One important date that I will look at is the refresh count of the Linkerd. So here, we didn't apply any authorization or any certificate, but you can follow, for example, for a given workload or giving uh, a pod or namespace. Uh, so we can put here pod, for example, and we'll be able to see that uh, the number of uh, refresh of the certificate. So we have zeros but that could be a really interesting uh, data to, to build. That's it for today's episode related to Linkerd. Uh, as you can see, uh, Linkerd is a very efficient and easy to use service mesh and having all the features that we expect from a service mesh. 
Linkerd has few features related to observability. So similar to Istio, it provides uh, metrics related to the various Linkerd proxies that has been injected. And also on the control plane, few metrics about the health of the, uh, of the service mesh. Linkerd provides this distributed tracing feature, which is really interesting. But as of now, let's hope that uh, an improvement will be done in Linkerd to also support the uh, trace context from open telemetry. So the, the trace propagator, the standard one. So then any observability solution of the market can utilize the traces produced by Linkerd. So if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you soon for another episode. See you. Bye.